I'm Jacqueline Baxter, Director for the Centre for Innovation in Business and Legal Education, and today I'm talking to Jessica Giles, welcome, um, who is a Senior Fellow of the HEA, of the Higher Education Academy, and a Barrister and Chair of the um, Public and Criminal Law Module. Um, so welcome again. Um, what I'd like to talk to you today is about your work researching, teaching and learning on your particular module. Thank you so much and it's lovely to be here. Uh, yes, so we had uh, we had two public and criminal law modules. One was with the Teach Out, the OU and the University of Law, which is the module uh, I was chairing. And uh, as with all Teach Out modu modules, I think there are certain scholarship issues that we need to look at and address because mm. we have students coming there who might need extra or additional skills uh, assistance with their skills training. But uh, what I was looking at really was retention and pass rates. And as I explored the scholarship issues, what also happened is I found out I was looking at student satisfaction and student mm. satisfaction mm. Uh, was raising. And I think my, the thing I noticed, both as a tutor and as a module chair, is we have our OU students come to us, a fantastically diverse uh, section of students, mm. amazingly enthusiastic, very committed, uh, and, and keen to gain that learning and those skills that they might not have uh, gained previously in their lives. Mm. So. I noticed as I was teaching the students, I noticed that they understood the material that they were reading, mm. but actually where the gaps were was in the skills to handle that material mm. and to understand what we were asking them to do in assessment. So what I did then is I developed a suite of skills materials mm -hmm. to help them interact with their tutors, help tutors give them feedback, and then sessions they could also go to. And then I created a skills checklist that could be used as a basis for a conversation with a student mm -hmm. because some of that feedback on TMAs, I think, can miss some of the gaps in study skills. So right. it might be time management, for mm -hmm. example, which isn't always evident in the TMAs, but might become evident if a student is regularly asking for extensions or mm -hmm. something like that. And it can also, what, what I found was that if you have a checklist, and as a basis for conversation with a the student, then it can act as um, a planning mechanism. So mm. if there's several skills gaps, then mm. the student can decide, oh, we'll, uh, we'll address this you know, in the next few weeks and then this in the next few weeks, those sorts of things. I think the other thing is to have a bank of materials for students to refer to is quite important mm. because then they can choose flexibly how much skills training to fit in around the acquisition of mm. substantive uh, knowledge. So yes, that was the project we ran. Super. And what sort of impact did this um, have on, on, on the students? And so we ran it iteratively over a, mm. a few presentations, uh, identifying in previous presentations what we might tweak to improve over time. And we were successful over time, so there was over 10% uh, raise in pass rates in Teach Out, which was a really quite a good result. Mm. Uh, mm. One would normally see uh, pass rates go down uh, yes. in Teach Out. So, so we, yes, a very, very positive result there. Okay, why do you think there are issues with teach out um, that there aren't? Teach out being the module coming to the end of its natural life. That's yeah. right, yeah. So I think. Um, as, as a module runs through its presentations, for, for many reasons, because the um, OU courses are open and mm. often students are studying part-time, mm. students can come out of the, uh, their study and come back in again. Mm. But as you get into teach out, mm. or, or if they don't pass, they can then come back in again, or mm. if they've assessment bank, they can come back in again. So um, as time passes and you get nearer and nearer the final presentations, mm. students tend to come in either because they've had a gap in their studies or because they haven't passed in previous presentations mm -hmm. um, or, or there might be other reasons why they're coming back in. So you get a mix of students who are ongoing students mm -hmm. but a mix of students who have additional needs mm -hmm. uh, around that. Okay, that's really interesting and of course this sort of work is wild, widely applicable to 
other modules across the university and indeed outside of it as well. Yes, I mean, I think there, there are, whether one's in teach out or not, there are always skills gaps mm. uh, that one can identify for and with students. And there's a certain amount, I think, that's generic. Mm. And uh, there is a certain amount that I think is specific to a particular student. So that would be discovered on the basis of a mm. communication with the tutor, or it might come up in online tutorial sessions. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much. It's very interesting to find out how the research was done and also what impact it's had on our students. So thanks a lot. <laughs>